welcome everyone to uh, today's virtual open house. We're very excited that you're here to uh, listen to uh, some of the information we have about our Master of Archives and Records Administration program. Uh, it's a unique program, one we're very proud of. Uh, we're going to talk to you about uh, the iSchool and the program itself. Uh, we'll give you an overview of the degree, what it's comprised of. Uh, we'll uh, tell you what it's like to be an online student uh, from the instructor's perspective. And then should Katie be joining us soon, uh, she will be able to fill you in on the student's perspective. And then uh, we have time for questions and answers. So I wanted to explain to you our administration. I'm at the top, not because I'm the top person, but because I'm talking to you right now. Uh, but I'm Dr. Pat Franks. I'm a professor in the program, and I'm also the MARA program coordinator. And I serve as the MARA advisor. So I'm the one who would talk to you about the courses you're taking, if you have questions on electives, that type of thing. Uh, Dr. Hirsch, right below me, is really the head of the School of Information. She's also a professor. She's a fantastic person, very forward-looking, and so uh, we're very proud of the things that are happening in the iSchool. Uh, Dr. Linda Main is our associate director, and uh, she's the coordinator, as you can see there, of admissions and graduate advising. Uh, she's the one that uh, I go to if I don't know all the answers to the questions that I receive. Uh, and I, in addition to her, uh, I often turn to Sheila. You'll probably uh, be in touch with Sheila quite a bit if you join us. She is what's called an online student advisor. So I'm the academic advisor about courses you should take. Sheila makes sure you figure out how to take them if you need permissions, uh, if uh, seats are open in certain courses, uh, if you need to fill out anything for graduation, that type of thing. So uh, these are people that are more in the administrative roles. And then our primary faculty, uh, Dr. Dalby is uh, with us tonight and you'll be hearing from her soon. Uh, Jason Kaltenbacher is not, but he is one of our lecturers. He teaches a course each fall and spring, and uh, if you join us in the fall, you would be taking one course from him. Uh, Joshua Zimmerman is one of our other uh, lecturers, and uh, Josh teaches the research methods for archivists and records managers, and uh, he teaches that in the fall, and he also, uh, many spring semesters, not this one, offers a one credit course in uh, uh, archivist persona. I'm just saying that uh, uh, briefly as a title. It's quite a long title, but uh, it, it talks about uh, where the uh, idea of the archivist uh, as a professional came from and uh, how it evolved over time. It's quite interesting. And then this is Katie. And uh, Katie is our student assistant. And Katie's been uh, with us for, uh, there she is, Katie's on. So hi, Katie. Hi. Uh, Katie's been with us for uh, almost two years, it's a year and a half now, and she's going to be graduating in the spring, and I'm going to be so sad uh, because she really handles a lot for us. So I am going to uh, let Katie describe uh, some of the online resources we have, and she'll talk to you about what she does, and she's a good person to ask about the student perspective on classes later on. So uh, let me move over to the first slide, and Katie, why don't you take it away? Okay. Uh, our university, the iSchool and the MARA program have posted a great deal of information online. Um, and what we're going to show you are a lot of the sites um, and how we use them and stuff. Uh, next slide. So this is our university and iSchool website, uh, our web page. It's a great place to go and get general information and this is actually our brand new site so we've updated it and you have access to our blogs and uh, information about course rotations and, and where to what you'll be uh, studying and, and things like that okay so we have Curriculum, 
uh, the classes that you can be taking that's are, that are electives as well as what you will be taking in the MARA program. And then you also have access to the iStudent blog, which is the blog uh, for, the whole, for the whole program. And it does a lot of uh, blog posts about things like books that are coming out by some of our professors or uh, we'll be doing a few Mara things on it and uh, MLS, MLIS was there recently. Um, so there's a lot of information that you can gain from it and just a lot of knowledge. Uh, next slide. Social media, this is the part where I'm probably the most familiar with. We have Facebook and Twitter, and um, we do a lot of outreach through it. This semester, the spring semester, we're focusing on uh, scholarships, and uh, last year we focused on what kind of social media do our alumni and our current students like to get information from us. So our Facebook, you can get posts about news articles and scholarship information and job opportunities. It's a great place to interact with other students. And our Twitter, we definitely uh, retweet and follow other archives and people and uh, museums, and especially during Archivist Day in October, there's a hashtag, Ask an Archivist, we follow it, and we find all the information and um, retweet that and stuff. So, next slide. Okay, so the Mara blog, I work on a, a lot of, or most of it, all of it, and <laughs> in this, in this blog, we have what we call the Spotlight Series, where a student and a, or an alumni come in and, and write about something that they have gone through, like Sharon went to an ARMA chapter meeting. And if you were interested in going to an ARMA chapter meeting, she tells you what, it, what her experience was like. We have people who talk about the CRM exam and uh, what they've done in, or the program has meant to them. We have professors that talk about pro, a program that they're trying to, to advertise. It's a great place to get some information about the MARA program itself. And next slide. Okay. Here's our Facebook page. Um, See, as you can see the, for, in the picture, we have a scholarship opportunity. We're posting about um, a paper proposal soon. So it's just a great place to get information. And next slide. The Vacara blog, the Vacara is a virtual center. Uh, <laughs> Pat, can you help me? For archives and records administration? Yes. Okay, so Vakara um, is in Second Life, and this is where they uh, you're able to meet up with alumni and students for who who want to be in the setting of Second Life. You get to do. Let's see, we did a a Dickens Christmas project where. Uh, some of our alumni read a Dickens Christmas story, and they did, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of the word. <laughs> they had props, and they had uh, noises that coincided with the story. It was a really great place, and it was a great uh, Dickens Christmas project. So it's a great opportunity to meet people. Next slide. I think this is mine. Thank you, Katie. All right, so now I'll talk to you a little bit about the program. 
Uh, when uh, it was developed, uh, it came out of the idea that the MLIS program did have a career pathway with archives and records in it, but not enough information about those uh, topics. And so uh, the school decided that they would create a separate second degree program. So we're similar to the MLIS in that we're an independent degree program. Uh, however, we have no library science in it. So when you hear somebody say an ALA accredited school, ALA is American Library Association, well, it's not the school that's accredited. It really would be the program. And the program would be the MLIS, the Master of Library and Information Science, because it's a library program, you know, so that's what ALA does. But uh, the MARA program uh, really is geared to archives, records administration, and information governance. And therefore, there's no one association that would certify this type of program. Our whole institution is certified, uh, so we're fine there, but I'm talking about a professional certification. So in this case, our students must become certified on their own uh, once they enter the professional realm. And uh, that means that uh, they really know what they're doing. So we looked at ARMA core competencies for ARMA International, the Records Management Association, uh, and we looked looked at Society of American Archivist guidelines for their graduate programs, what were they looking for, but then we also looked at the certification examinations for the professionals. So if you want to be a certified records manager, what do you need to know? And that came from the Institute of Certified Records Managers. We also looked at if you want to be a certified archivist, what do you need to know? And that too came from the Academy of Certified Archivists. And so we put all of that together and created curriculum with courses that should deliver all of this to you and we're very proud and I'll explain to you in a minute uh, why we believe we have been quite successful but along the way something else popped up and it was the information governance professional certification that also came from the records management field from ARMA but this time it was looking at beyond just the archives or the records at a whole variety of uh, skills that one would need if they were going to look at all information uh, that was not just uh, managed and preserved, but actually used, analyzed, utilized uh, within the organization. And so we uh, created two courses uh, that, uh, in fact, one of them started right the same time the very first exam went out for the Information Governance Professional, and it is the Information governance course that Lisa, Dr. Dalvey teaches. Uh, and then uh, she has a second course that complements it. It's information assurance. Uh, those two are uh, excellent courses that prepare you to look beyond the traditional. So this also is incorporated into our program. And now uh, I had said I can show you why we're uh, pretty confident that we've done it right and that we're maintaining it well. Uh, the ICRM, the Institute uh, for Certified uh, Records Managers, uh, has an agreement with us that once our students finish the MAR program, uh, they will receive credit for parts one through five of six part examination. Uh, normally you pay a hundred dollars uh, each section. So you'd pay like uh, $500 for these first five exams, but uh, they certify that with the content of our courses, should you graduate from the program, you will get credit for it. And then if you wanted to become a certified records analyst, you could immediately request that. Uh, once uh, the graduation has been uh, certified through our university, and if you have uh, one year of work experience or if you take our um, our internship or our organizational consulting project course, either one of those will qualify for that one year of experience. So it's really, I think, a very good indication that uh, the ICRM is very pleased with this program and the content that we have that would prepare you for uh, working in the records management field. But we also, at the same time, 
uh, had the uh, Academy of Certified Archivists take a look at our courses and evaluate them to see how well we were satisfying their requirements for skills that uh, archivists would need. And uh, of our 11 required courses, 10 were approved uh, by them and are actually posted on their website. The one that was not is the internship organizational consulting project only because that's never the same for anybody. It's always different. And so they couldn't look at content that they could say, oh yes, this satisfied this skill. It might satisfy different skills for everybody. So uh, we are very proud of this. What this means here is that uh, when you attempt to take the uh, exam to be a certified archivist, you have to prove that you've had education that satisfies their requirements to sit for that exam as a student, and our courses qualify for that. And there are two electives I'll talk about a little later that also have been approved. Those are the two info courses that uh, are also on the ACA website and uh, those uh, are also pre-approved for uh, anyone who's wishing to sit for the ACA exam. Now, the reason we don't get credit for that exam is they only have one uh, part of it. It's the 100 uh, question exam. And so they do want to see that you take that, but at least you qualify for it. So we're, we're really pleased that uh, we believe this program will um, instill the qualities and, and the uh, qualifications in you that you need in order to satisfy needs for records management or archival positions. And more and more we're seeing uh, information governance positions coming along and you are certainly qualified for those as well when you graduate. So uh, this is a uh, what we call our program learning outcomes. They're the core competencies that every graduate must satisfy. Uh, what that means is through the courses that we've put together, we know that if you uh, take and pass each course, do the required uh, uh, assignments, the readings, and so on, uh, you will be able to do these things, A through J. Uh, and for example, in B, recognizing social, cultural, and economic dimensions of records, record keeping, and record use. And that really explains why we look at records for uh, business, for example, or government, because uh, we have a lot of issues with the economic dimensions. That's where you're keeping things for finance, right? For tax purposes, for contracts, uh, accounts receivable and payable for customers. But also at the same time, we're looking at society and through the government, what kind of records uh, have to be kept for society. Uh, and certainly your identification so that at some point you collect social security. I mean, those are the kind of records that are really important there. Uh, and cultural, uh, just think about our National Archives and the Declaration of Independence that's there. So uh, these are all the kinds of records that we're talking about when we talk about the uh, goals of the archivist and the records manager to preserve those records. Uh, so you'll see a number of other uh, competencies here on the list. Uh, what happens is each student will prepare an e-portfolio that will demonstrate how they have mastered this through the assignments that you do, and you have to keep track of those assignments. I'll explain that a little bit later, too. Uh, so what are the required courses? Well, I said that 11 uh, courses are required, but actually you need 42 credits, so there are uh, three more courses that are electives, but these are the required uh, courses. And you'll see that when we talk about record keeping professions, that's archivists and records managers as well, and information governance. And you see in the next course, management of records and archival institutions, that's, that's intertwined. And when we look at records creation and appraisal, we're actually talking about appraisal too, uh, from the archival point of view, as well as from the records management point of view. So uh, uh, there's a course I teach there that I really am having fun with, uh, enterprise content, digital preservation. Uh, you would actually be working in Office 365 and SharePoint online for half of the course, and then you'd be working in uh, Preservica, which is a terrific commercial uh, uh, environment for uh, digital preservation. So you'd be getting hands-on uh, experience through that course. 
Now this, I mentioned a portfolio that you would have to create. This is uh, the beginning of Rachel's uh, e-portfolio and at the top you see home, competencies, inclusion, and affirmation. Well, the competencies would be those listed A, B, C, D, all the way through J. And in addition to the intro that uh, Rachel has here explaining what this uh, e-portfolio is about, she, under that competency tab, would explain uh, what the competency means, um, the kind of evidence she has to support it. She would have links to her work that shows that she's done that, and she would explain how that will be useful to her in her current or future career. Uh, this is a course rotation schedule that I wanted to show you. At the bottom here, the last two rows, uh, oh, I'm going to let Lisa take over. <laughs> I, I see that. I should be doing that. So, Lisa, if you have your mic off, can you just pick up where I left off? I just want to say hello, everyone, and welcome to the Mara Open House. I'm very excited uh, to be speaking with you today. I'm speaking to you actually from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, where I live, and I have been teaching in the Mara program since 2009, which means I've I've had the pleasure to work with all MARA students. I teach a number of courses in the MARA program. Again, welcome. And I'm gonna be speaking to you right now about the course rotation and other aspects of the online experience. But any questions during the session, if you have, or you know, just ping me, or uh, if you have any questions later, please feel free to uh, send me an email and both Dr. Franks and I will put our emails in the discussion uh, area, the chat area in a few minutes. But this, this, this important slide is uh, one sample of the actual course rotation. So if you are a student entering in the fall 2009, this would be your schedule. This is, uh, I, I, just one sample, um, this is, I like to call it the happy path that the school has created for you. This is the sample of a course that will, a uh, course selection program that will take you to the program in three years. But this, and I think it's just a helpful tool, but it is by no way required. We've had students go through this program in a two year pro, two year program, two year program. Uh, progress as well as you know five or six years and so absolutely this is just uh, one example but what students really like about this program according to the, our, our exit survey is that it's the flexibility of the program they can finish in two years or they can finish in six seven years and they can you know take a term off we all have family issues you know you know people have given birth and had family issues and so that's what's really awesome about this program is that although this is the uh, you know the pre prescribed program you can you can uh, uh, take take courses in and on when when it's convenient for you and obviously you are not alone when you are picking your courses because you have your faculty advisor which would be Dr. Franks who would help you all along the way in picking your courses. In order to allow students the opportunity to really um, customize the program based on their own interests, students select three additional electives from the MLIS or info program during the course of their program. And as you can see from this extensive listing, there are some awesome courses, uh, including like digital Curation, information privacy, project management, Web 2.0. I often say to everyone that I really wish I was a student so that I could, you know, I had the opportunity to take these courses myself because they are really cutting edge and relevant to the industry. So this listing was really was reviewed and approved by the Mara Advisory Committee. And we haven't spoke about that, but uh, we have a, a committee of experts. Uh, that advise us on, on, on our curriculum. And so these courses were really selected by them and made up of, it. This, the committee is made up of industry experts in the field. And so when you take these electives, you can ensure that the, uh, 
uh, electives provide you with the real skills you need to succeed in the profession. I think that the electives really are like just an awesome, excellent educational complement to the really core fundamental courses that we're providing in the MARA program. Next slide. So again, within the MARA program, students can choose to take advanced certifications to complement their and enhance their degree. Here's a selection of just three. Uh, I can easily be, it, these can be easily be accomplished by selecting the right electives, and I'll talk about that in the next slide. But we have three uh, pathways, a digital asset management, information governance assurance and security, and uh, data analytics and data-driven uh, decision-making. And these are really like hot topics within the field. But next slide, and I can provide a little bit more information on that. So what is important uh, from the previous slides, uh, what is important to remember that when you are selecting, say, electives to do your, to do that carefully, because if you do it right, you can select the right courses and, and then qualify to get these like awesome certifications. So for example, you're already required to take MARA 284 and MARA uh, in, uh, Information Governance and Information Secure, Information Assurance. So if you added this one extra course as an elective, which was called Cybersecurity, you would qualify to have one of these additional uh, certifications, which awesome looks awesome on your resume. And so it's just like an added benefit of you know, coming to the program because we have these uh, amazing certifications. I think I'll take you through what a, what a MARA course really looks like. If you join in the program, one of the first courses you will take is called MARA 200, and I teach that, and it's probably my favorite course. Uh, it's called Record Keeping and uh, Record Keeping and the Record Keeping Professional. In society and in history, it is a fundamental course which all other courses will later build upon. The course really begins by exploring the relationship between archives uh, and the professional associations and the publications we produce and our code of ethics and our code of conduct. And then the course really looks at um, the relationship between our professional association, or, so our professions and our professions between archives and our information security, information security, information provide, information privacy, our library colleagues, all of the other professions that are really in this space, and we really look at you know our our relationship between our professions. We then move to uh, more of the, you know, the professional functions of an archivist. We talk about arrangement and description, preservation, outreach. The course is really a great balance between practical application of the profession and the theoretical constructs we need to understand as records managers and archivists. And then at the end of the course, we really get into some really great stuff, and this is what the students like the most, according to our our surveys is that they really like to understand the concept of records and trust and collective memory and, and records, how it's power and it's, and its relationship to human rights. And really we close the course with uh, analysis of records and archives and the transformational change that is happening in our profession due to electronic records and, and data management. So this is just a really awesome uh, screenshot because this is really what a typical course looks like. And I just want to say that the content is available 24-7 in Canvas, which is our learning management system. And typically a, a course, it looks like this on our main page and it's divided into 15 units. 15 units and each unit will uh, have a, a lecture, a pre-recorded lecture from your instructor and it's always uh, our lectures and our content is always 
uh, associated for people with learning disabilities as an aside. So uh, when you're in, in every single lecture, you will be signed re readings, you will be side, assigned discussions for every single uh, week, and then you will have assignments. Typically, it's three assignments uh, a semester, and you will work on that throughout the semester. And also, this is just a learning management system, but most uh, instructionals will add on to this learning man management system. You'll be you, you'll be getting Zoom lectures like you're well, like you're getting tonight, or Skype, or WebEx, and other social media and blogs. So we we use social media uh, in, in our course content be beyond just what the learning management system. Uh, 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 what you're seeing right now. I think I might be back to you, Pat. That is, yes. Yes, and I was going to say, uh, when we use um, a platform like Zoom, uh, we don't require attendance. Uh, normally, you'll see that those are used for supplement to the course or students use them for group projects, for example. Uh, our programs are uh, asynchronous, so you can... Uh, be very successful uh, in them by working through the uh, courses, as Lisa had mentioned, uh, that are open 24-7. You just have to make sure that you do your assignments uh, when they're due, uh, which is usually at the end of a week, but can be a couple of weeks or, or a couple of months if it's a major project. <clears throat> Excuse me. This uh, program performance page, if you're wondering about the program itself, the quality of the program, uh, this is where we report out. The university requires all programs to have a page like this, so our MAR, report, uh, MAR program performance page uh, will have a lot of information you may be interested in. Uh, one of them uh, would be uh, external inputs to the uh, curriculum, and that's where uh, Katie uh, has created a job survey the last two years, and that's uh, the most recent one is posted there. Uh, she went through um, probably two months of job descriptions for archivists, records managers, information governance professionals, gathered that data, analyzed it, and put the information out there for you. What we do is track that to see uh, what we need in the curriculum to make sure that we are still continuing to prepare students for uh, the most recent requests uh, out there in the job market. Uh, but there is uh, much more information there for you as well. Uh, so uh, you might be wondering why would you take uh, Mara at SJSU. Uh, these are comments from uh, the students that uh, have graduated as they're leaving. There's an exit survey and they always mention a quality faculty program, the technology, but most of all the other students that they learn from. Uh, we have such a collaborative approach in our classes where uh, we expect everybody to work together so that everyone can succeed. Uh, that students really learn from one another another, uh, there is a, a diverse student body with uh, different types of experiences that all come together uh, in order to better understand the needs uh, for records, record keeping uh, across the spectrum. Uh, now you'd also though have an opportunity to learn from experts. I didn't mention guest lectures that we have. Our Second Life Student Archives program also puts on guest lectures that are available uh, if you don't want to go into Second Life to listen to through a uh, Zoom. Uh, we had one uh, not too long ago on artificial intelligence where the robot actually did part of the presentation. Uh, and then, of course, the cost. It's 474 a unit. You have 42 required units. That's 14 courses. And so the entire program is 19 uh, $1,908. You only pay for what you take. So if you take one course a semester, that's what you're paying for. Um, and the application process uh, right now, what we're doing is recruiting for fall. Uh, students are going to be beginning the spring semester very soon, and the next opportunity to join uh, us is in August. Uh, and uh, the information is online now. You can see that. Um, for the fall, our document deadline is uh, a little later in May, but you've 
got to apply by May 1st if, if you want to come. We don't have a, a cap, an upper cap. What we do is look at your um, bachelor's GPA. Uh, if it's 3.0 or above, then you will get in. Uh, if it's not, there is no way that you can get in until you raise that uh, because we don't take letters of recommendation. We don't look at work experience. We're not allowed to. All we can do is uh, have our university look at those transcripts for that 3.0. Uh, now, what they do, though, is if the 3.0 isn't there at the end, the complete final grade, they will look at your last 60 units of credit and to see, well, was that? a 3.0. If that was, then you would still be accepted. If that was not, then uh, what we recommend is you take a course or two somewhere else, raise that GPA, and then come back and apply again. And a number of people have done that. So uh, I also wanted to mention that we have scholarships available for new students. Uh, you can never uh, count on the scholarships paying your way here. It's not like for a bachelor's degree. Uh, and we are a, um, you know, a public university, so we don't have the kind of money that a private university was. But newly admitted students can apply for uh, one of uh, five different scholarships uh, uh, in the regular session uh, or special session. And you are in special session if you're a MARS student. Uh, that uh, is, uh, the regular session only means that you might live near campus and get a different uh, uh, fee, uh, which is almost similar to what you're paying if you're a special session student anyway. So uh, in MARA though, uh, what I've told you as far as the cost is exactly what it is. Uh, so you can always check out this page to see what else might be available. It's always nice to get one of these. But you probably, if you don't have your own funding, would be looking at financial aid for this. So I'm going to stop right now and uh, ask if you have any questions. And uh, I'm also going to stop the screen sharing for the um, uh, slides. So if you want to quickly jot down uh, the email address, uh, you can do that. But in a minute, we'll also put our email addresses in the chat area for you. So uh, right now, let me go back. Uh, to the session itself, and uh, I'm back. <laughs> and uh, if any of you would now would like to turn off your or turn on your mics, I should say, unmute yourselves if you have questions. Uh, put on your videos if you'd like to be seen. Please do that. And uh, anyone have a question for us? You can. Uh, Raise your hand, or just go ahead and say, um, ask your question. Who is AHA? <laughs> <laughs> and and Millen, did you see how your name pops up? If you laugh or you cough, your name is there. And if you have your video on, oh, oh okay, okay. <laughs> that's what it does. It's very sensitive. Yeah. Any questions at all from those of you on, on the... Uh... Uh, I have a question. Oh. Introduce yourself and then ask. All right. I'm Sabina Erickson. And my, I have a question about the discussions. Are they conducted uh, in, say, like a manner that we're doing now? Or is it simply um, something done online through, say, just a dis typed in discussion comments, or is it a, is it something more that requires you to be at the same oh, place no. at the same time as everyone else in the class? No, we're asynchronous. So uh, my classes will open on a Monday, uh, and there will be lectures, there will be readings, and there will be discussions, and you would click on the discussion, and you have, for me, we're all a little different, but for me, uh, you would have to answer the questions by Thursday evening so that other people have the rest of the week in order to read your answers and respond if they would like to. So when I open the uh, class on a Monday, I expect all discussions to be done by the following Sunday night, and then the following Monday, a new one will open. It's always in the learning management system along with the lectures and the other materials, links to outside readings, whatever it may be. Okay, thank you. 
And Pat, my is my course is exactly the same way. Good. The two of us agree. <laughs> And there are a few that might start on a different day, might say, that, uh, I thought I saw somebody uh, doing like Friday through Thursday. I don't know why, unless it fit better with their schedule and they didn't want to have to work on the weekend. When we allow you to go until Sunday night, that means we're usually there on Saturday and Sunday, making sure that you don't have any issues that you can't uh, deal with on your own. So it might be that, but. And I'm going to look at the chat area, see if we have any questions here. Uh, and I'm, I'm hearing, uh, are these certifications only for MARA or also MLAS? Uh, they, just MARA. Uh, because the MLIS, if you're taking a look at the Archives and Records Career Pathway in there, you're electing electives. And so not all programs are the same for every student, uh, although there is guidance for a career pathway. Uh, but uh, there is no guarantee that everybody is going to do what is needed in order to be approved by ICRM. So it's just for MARA. And the uh, certified uh, Academy of Certified Archivists uh, students who uh, take those courses can apply, but it just means that they're going to have to be looked at individually. You know, they'll have to show their transcripts. The MAR students don't. MAR students take, pass, graduate, and so everybody knows what they take. In the MLIS, we don't know that, all right? It can always be different, so it, it, it is different. What is Second Life? Well, many, many years ago, there was excitement about uh, avatars in other worlds, virtual worlds, and that's what Second Life is. So it started here on our campus in 2007. And when I uh, came, I think, uh, I started with a student at the time, a virtual center for archives and records in 2009. We're celebrating our 10th year. We're going to have our 10th uh, annual uh, conference this coming spring. Uh, it's a way for a small group of students who happen to really like that virtual environment to get together uh, to plan things. So there are different activities that we do. It's not for everyone. And I often hear people say, well, it's a game. It's not a game. Uh, there are sites in there where people do similar simulations like fighting fires. There are uh, health simulations in there. Uh, that's not what we do. What we usually do is look for our interests. Uh, do we want to have speakers on topics, like I said, uh, on uh, artificial intelligence, robotics? Are we looking at library services? Are we looking at uh, something else uh, like, you know, uh, museums, for example, we're going to be touring a museum in the spring. Uh, so everything that's created is in a virtual world. We use Linden's, uh, like everybody's excited about cryptocurrency now, but actually we've been turning our dollars into Linden's for years and buying uh, objects and, and buildings and clothing and things like that as well. So uh, if you're interested in that, you can always uh, ask me about it and I could have one of the people who works in it show you, even if you decide not to come to us, uh, we'd be welcome to give uh, you an orientation. We'd like to uh, uh, show that off a little. We even had a book based on it, and several of our students wrote chapters for that book. So they're now published authors as well. And two students, oh no, I'm thinking one student and I just put in a paper for a uh, a conference uh, on computer technology that's going to be held in Portugal in May and it was accepted uh, and so she will be representing us there in Portugal uh, yes and uh, Katie is explaining because Katie is our representative to the student associations for Vicara and uh, she said beautifully it's where users can create connect and chat with others from around the world uh, are there security certifications available for the MLAS? Uh, the MLAS is different. I uh, recommend that you go to one of their open uh, houses. I don't know of any agreements they have for any type of certification like that, uh, but that's something definitely that you should bring up at the open house. It may be something that they can negotiate. Uh, because they do have the cybersecurity course and they have some other courses like that. Uh, it would be, um, I think, uh, really interesting to uh, pose that question and see uh, if you could perhaps spur some interest in following that up. 
Any other questions? If you'd like to just grab the mic, please do that. Hi there. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Cool. Hi, my name is Ellis Martin. Uh, thank you all so much for being here. Uh, this has been super informative. Um, I just have a question. My background is in um, small academic museums and small uh, queer archives and I have a lot of experience with kind of cobbling together with open source software and I was just wondering what's the relationship to you know working with um, like those hard kind of tech skills um, do you do any is there like kind of back of house um, is that folded into the program at all um, for uh, asset management um, yeah well, you know, uh, we have, um, I mentioned the course that I teach where we use uh, Preservica for digital preservation. Students actually uh, follow the OAS model and uh, create submission packages, bring them in, migrate, that type of thing, mm -hmm. uh, and then make them available through WordPress for universal access. Uh, other instructors uh, in the MLAS program uh, offer courses that uh, if you're interested in that we recommend you take as your three electives. Uh, one of the instructors does digital curation that uh, was mentioned, uh, preservation where they use content VM. We do have a digital asset management course as well that you could look into for an elective. I don't know exactly what goes on in there but I do know uh, that a number of our uh, instructors do include different type of software. Uh, we have one that we offer through our uh, MARA program. It's a two-credit elective each fall. It's on digital forensics and uh, that uh, also is a hands-on software is introduced there uh, and I think they're using Bit Curator in there and in fact they'll be meeting with that instructor this week and with the cybersecurity instructor to see uh, what more we can do with that. Um, so I'm not sure that I answered your question, uh, but it depends. We have only, I believe, one or two museum-related courses, if that's really what you are looking at. Uh, other universities have programs in it. We do not. But uh, if you wanted a strictly museum-related course, you'd have to look at the MOA selectives, and uh, you could take that if you were in the MAR program. Sure. Thank you so much. Okay. Any others? Okay, I'm going to um, stop right here then. Uh, and uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, Dr. Dalby and Katie and I will put our uh, email addresses in the chat area for you so that you can contact us uh, and we'll be glad to answer them for you.